Welcome to the Boob Tube, sponsored by the Women's Academy of Breast Tomography and the Pink Bow. Today, I'm so excited to have, this is going to be a great little show because this is why breast tomography was invented. Early risk assessment for preventative treatment. Jenna is a breast cancer survivor and she is going to share her story. But before we get started, there's one little thing I want to share with you. It is important because Jenna, I'm going to explain, was just barely outside of normal limits. And what I've tried to express to all of you, it is so vital to go to a certified clinic that has a camera with a 480 optical line, 480 minimal optical line, because you have to see these blood vessels. It's not in color. It is in black, hot, or reverse gray. Then make sure you are going to a qualified interpreter. Because again, Jenna's breast thermogram was barely, it was actually not abnormal. It was called equivocal. It was barely outside of normal limits. And she did everything correctly, and now we're going to share her story. So, why did you come in? Because I love why you came in. Uh, I didn't want to come in. My friend, who is a breast cancer survivor, dragged me in. She said, let's just go, let's just have it done, everybody needs to do it, you're 41, I was 41 at the time. Thank you, I was, let's gonna, just do yeah, it. I was gonna tell you your age. Yeah, and I came in and we did the thermography. I am a nurse practitioner, I am a Western trained medicine, so I was a little skeptical about it. And then Wendy called me a couple of days later and loaded some information, which I was a little lost at first because I wasn't sure what to do, because it was off limit, but it wasn't really a big deal at this time. It wasn't abnormal. It, it was, threw me a little off, like me. what to do. Yeah. Um, so what I did, I grabbed my report, I printed it out, and I went to see my primary physician. And I uh, recommendation by Wendy was to um, follow up with the ultrasound. And I came in and I said, this is what I did. Would they please order me the ultrasound? And the protocol was different. She said, we can't do the pro uh, ultrasound. We have to have a mammogram done because otherwise insurance will not cover. And unless the mammogram is abnormal, then we can do the ultrasound. And we did the mammogram within two weeks from my thermography studies. And it came back normal findings. The only thing was on my mammogram interpretation is dense breast tissue. Now, a year later, we know that dense breast tissue is one of the known risks for a breast cancer. Yes. And, um, and I sent you to ultrasound, which is interesting. Um, in 2009, the U.S. Preventative, Preventative Task Force changed the age from 40 to 50 in the United States. Because um, for a woman under the age of 50, you were 41 at the time, a mammogram is only 48% accurate, and I'm 44. But we do need to have further imaging. When you have an equivocal or abnormal thermography, you have to move forward. Women under 40, that's why I suggest an ultrasound. And a mammogram, that will work also, but you have to move on, or we suggest an MRI. Right. So, um, so my mammogram was okay, and... Um, kind of relaxed at that time. I said, okay. I read the recommendations. I changed some of my diet habits, and I always felt like I was not um, eating badly, but certain habits obviously were not perfect. And um, so move forward or forward a few months. That was the end of July, mid-December. I palpated my own tumor on the left side, and that's where the, some of the um, red signs or warning signs were at that time. That we'd seen in the thermography. Uh, that the we'd seen on the thermography. I, and I actually look at the vascularity. Right. So as an interpreter, I'm looking at the stimulation of a possible tumor caused by the stimulation of the blood vessels of a possible tumor. Right. Again, thermography does not detect cancer. All I can see is stimulation of the blood vessels. Right. Just clearing that up. Thank the you. Left side, I um, found the tumor, and again, being nurse practitioner and working in women's health, prior to that, so it gave me a little bit more understanding what to do. So my next appointment was with my OBGYN doctor for further testings, and I had 
ultrasound done after that visit that was suspicious and followed a uh, needle biopsy that was confirmed with breast carcinoma. And um, I had bilateral mastectomy in January. That was my choice that was based on different factors of recurrency, um, possibility of breast cancer in another breast. And um, I had another mammogram done, I had MRI done, that was a part of the pre-surgical studies, pre-op, and they were all confirmed with that one particular tumor or the mass that was actually marked, the, the marker, mm -hmm. after the biopsy, they mm -hmm. have to put a clip. Yeah. So to know exactly the location for the surgeon and for further stat studies. Uh, my biggest surprise was after my surgery, when I went home and my surgeon called me this, the final pathology report. My left breast was not a single tumor breast. It had what they called multifoci. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I ended up having a three malignant tumors mm -hmm. that only one was detected mm -hmm. by mammogram and an an MRI and the ultrasound. So my other two tumors were picked up only with the final pathology reports. And at that time, it was end of January, there were two and three millimeters. So they were malignant, but none of the studies were able to pick them up. I had mammogram and MRI in January. Yeah. So that was big shock yeah. for me, yeah. but at the same time, it was the proof that my decision in my particular case was absolutely right. right. And everyone makes different decisions. Right. I have women that choose not to do that. There's women that choose to do alternative treatments, and I mean alternative Western treatments, not herbs, going to um, Cancer of Hope or down to Tijuana. I meant medical treatment. Right. Yeah. There are medical treatments. There's other things there are, out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Aptomies, yeah. and everybody yeah. have to be comfortable has to have, with the decision. And that's what I love, and that's what we're here to support. I have women that have double mastectomies. I have women that choose alternative treatments. I have women that choose not to do anything. Right. And that's your choice. Right. And that's what we're here to support. And I'm just here to give you the information. Because we do monitor breast cancer and we want to monitor her breast. And what's so fascinating, and we're kind of jumping ahead, is now that she's had a double mastectomy, now we're even monitoring how that's healing. We're monitoring how that's working. What was amazing with Jenna is because they caught it so early, it has not spread. It's not in her lymph, which is just right. I didn't a have blessing, to do a blessing. lots of radiation, no radiation, no, radiation, no chemo, chemo, and that's, that's why she chose the way she went out. with the double mastectomy. And what is amazing with monitoring, because we're going to show her mastectomy images, is she got to keep her nipples. And that's what's really hard. A lot of my patients that have had cancer, they're, they're okay with the implant, but losing the nipple. And her, and I have to say, surgeries, just in seven years I've been doing this, because I'm always impressed with the surgeries that I've seen from the 70s and 80s and what they're doing now. But we can monitor and see how that nipple adheres to the implants, the muscle tissue, because the muscle actually has more circulation. So we're having to have a whole new baseline. And it's actually very fascinating right. if you actually look at the And this. not everybody's nipples can be saved. Exactly. Because exactly. of the exactly. Of exactly. The tumor exactly. And the in extent of the right. disease. Right, and I apologize, so, ladies, if I misled you. Um, I wasn't saying that. I was just saying because right. her, yeah, right. it, it was been just my so location early. being so early, yeah. and um, yeah. the doctor were able to do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your surgeon did such a beautiful job. Yeah, and that's that yeah. makes you and that and that's part of the problem is women want to feel beautiful right. still, and you lose that, and you're you're going through such an emotional time, and it's not just life and death. It's also cosmetic. Because this, you know, there's something about the beauty of our breasts. And we have to recognize that as women. And that's why I love your story is because of that. Is